Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be taking a look at this super critical gas chamber I just made. Let me take it apart for you and we'll uh, see how it works. So I've been wanting to make one of these for a while actually. It's been on my list for a long time, but I've only ever gotten to it in the last couple of weeks. If you're familiar with it, you'll recognize that this looks a lot like the one that Ben over at Applied Science made for supercritical CO2, and that's mostly where the inspiration for this project came from. I'll put a link in the description so you can go check his out. I mean, it certainly turned out a lot better than mine. So here's everything that makes up the chamber. Um, the side walls are just quarter inch acrylic discs that I have drilled to clearance these quarter 20 bolts which I used the whole thing used to hold the whole thing together. Um, these then obviously get butted up against these little one inch Buna N o-rings and that all gets compressed against the body here. The body is uh, 6061 aluminum, 2 inches OD, uh, about 0.9 inches ID. And I've machined a little groove for the O-rings and six holes that allow it to be held together with these bolts. Um, the filling apparatus on top was a bit of a custom job. I've made these little, this, well this piece here was a custom fitting I made out of some out of some brass rod and then a little 1 8 NPT nipple that then couples to this needle valve and this whole apparatus can be used to both release the chamber and fill the chamber. I fill it using this, um, this butane for lighters and stuff. So the speaking of the butane I'm not doing super critical CO2 like um, Ben Krasnow did because frankly a lot of this stuff isn't rated for the pressures involved in CO2 in super critical CO2 and maybe even just liquid CO2. This is a relatively low pressure system and butane only has a vapor pressure of I think 30 psi. So there's hardly any strain on these parts. I mean, if you saw his video, his walls were like close to an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, these things could probably stand up to some pressure, quarter inch acrylic, I'd say probably 100, 200 PSI. But again, we're using butane, which is 30 PSI, just for testing. Uh, that's the other reason we can't go, go with higher pressure gases is because this groove I've cut here. Um, so. The O-rings do seat in here pretty nice, but this isn't a proper dovetailed O-ring groove. So while they do sit in here and get compressed nicely and fit, there is always the risk of these things blowing out because they're not there's not like the proper groove where this thing can like snap in there and get retained really well. So this is again fine for my application. I wouldn't trust it above couple hundred psi. So butane, while it does work as a liquid in here, no problem, I'm still considering whether or not to actually take it to its critical point in this chamber because the critical point of butane is like 300 degrees Fahrenheit and 500 psi, which for the reasons I just discussed is a little bit hairy when using it in this setup. I'm not sure if I would completely trust it. And I mean, I'm sure you're probably asking, well, why didn't you just make a setup that could handle a few hundred PSI or a thousand PSI or whatever? And it really comes down to a matter of cost. I'm pretty limited budget-wise, and these, these discs from McMaster can get pretty expensive fast. And really just like all the fittings up here, I didn't want to have to spend a ton of money on them. I'm not going to say exactly how much, but this was a pretty cheap little project, and I'd like to keep it that way. But uh, ramblings aside, let's assemble this thing. I'll see if we can fill it up with some butane, and then we can 
see how it looks. Okay, so now we've got it all assembled here. As you can see, the O-rings are on the verge of pushing out of their grooves a bit, which is, I don't want to get the pressures too high. But it's all together now, and I think now we'll try and fill it up. Now this is a little bit finicky currently, but it more or less comes down to getting the butane and just putting this in this tube and trying to fill it. I might just have to do this off camera because it's really a pain. It's it's hard because the chamber has to be basically pressurized by the butane while it's being filled or else obviously it'll just boil as it goes down this tube when it gets in the chamber because the boiling point of butane is 30 degrees so it, would, it flashes off really rapidly. So you really gotta like squeeze this part and turn the can upside down and hope. Yeah, I'm gonna do this off camera. All right, here we go. So a uh, funny story, I actually ran out of butane there. So I mean, I managed to fill it a little bit, but there's not a lot in there. You can, oh yeah, you can see, I guess. So there you have, nice little bit of liquid butane. I'm going to do a bit more research into the actual structural properties of this my materials here and maybe we'll try and make it go super critical at some point but I'm a little bit hesitant to do that right now. If anything it's a cool desk ornament. Well there you have it, the super critical gas chamber, um, more just low pressure liquid gas chamber I guess is a more appropriate name for it but uh yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you next time